natural, healthful fats. I'm not talking about artificial fats. I'm not talking about trans fats or hydrogenated fats, which are mostly included in foods for, for shelf life and for processing and for taste. I'm talking about natural, healthy fats. You've got two kinds. They're called unsaturated and they're called saturated. Now, if you're not a chemist, you might just say solid and liquid. Saturated fats tend to be solid. Unsaturated fats tend to be liquid. Solid fats are stable. Hydrogenated fats are fake solid fats. They're artificial solid fats. Trans fats, likewise, artificial solid fats. But natural solid fats, lard, butter, coconut oil, palm oil, these are actually quite healthy. They're very important. When I grew up in the 60s and the 70s, we were told saturated fat's bad for you. Stay away from butter. Stay away from lard. Stay away from saturated fat, coconut oil, and palm oil. Today we know saturated fat can actually be beneficial, especially, by the way, if you're dealing with brain health issues like Alzheimer's disease. There's a lot of literature that talks about the importance of saturated fat for brain health, including coconut oil, FYI. The unsaturated fats, now that's where you got to be a little bit careful. Saturated fats are stable. They're solid. They don't move. Unsaturated fats are unstable. They're liquid. And these you got to be a little bit careful with, especially two very, 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 very important unsaturated fats. They're called essential fats. They're like vitamins. The same way vitamins are essential and you can't live without them, these two fats, these two unsaturated fats, these two liquid fats are essential. They're like vitamins. And they're acidic. They have an acid nature. Thus the term essential fatty acids. These are like vitamins. They they're, they're, have the same essential nature as vitamins. Without vitamins, you can't live. Without these two fatty acids, you can't live. And your body cannot make them, which makes dietary intake of essential fatty acids vital. Now, I've been working with EFAs in the skincare world since the early 1980s. And it is amazing what essential fatty acids can do to improve skin conditions like eczema, psoriasis, dry skin, even accelerated aging. By the way, dry skin is not a moisturizer problem. I know if you've, if you've heard me on this program, you've been listening for a while on this program, you know that's my position on moisturizers. And I'm telling you this as somebody who's been formulating skincare products for 30 years. Dry skin is not a moisturizer problem. In fact, dry skin can be caused by moisturizers because moisturizers seal the surface of the skin, preventing the production of moisture factors. On the other hand, by using essential fatty acids, generous amounts of your ultimate EFAs, three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night, taking them with meals, you can do a heck of a lot more to truly reverse dry skin, to truly soften and hydrate and moisturize your skin from the inside out without having to smear on a toxic moisturizer. Yes, toxic, because the preservative is toxic, the fragrance is toxic, and the emulsifier and the surfactant aren't doing you any good either. So you got two kinds of essential fatty acids. You got omega-3s and omega-6s, and there's a lot of controversy about how much we need and the proportions of each and the relationship of each one and to each other, and there's no consensus. Everybody, people who study nutrition have, all have different opinions. There's no way of really knowing, and I, I don't really want to get into it too much because there's no way to really know. But it's best to make sure, in my opinion, that you're getting somewhere between 1 to 1 to 4 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. And don't let anybody tell you that you get too much omega-6s and not enough omega-3s because it's not true. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'll tell you what I mean about that when we come back from our break, and we'll take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Get your phone calls here in just a moment. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you if you have questions about the longevity products or formulations or skin health issues you may be dealing with or skin health products or formulations, something you may have heard about, read about, or something you may have been told and you want clarification on, we welcome your calls, 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, we love hearing success stories. And uh, if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, including our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, 
where omega-6 healing cream, all made with lots of vitamin C, no preservatives, no fragrance. You can feel good about using Truth Skin Health products on your skin. They last for months. They're packed with active ingredients. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Got a letter from Dan who says his 90-year-old father's been fighting macular degeneration for some time now. He's in good health. This is, I love this part, and I hear this all the time. Okay, I'm not picking on Dan. I'll tell you what I mean here in a sec. Oh, actually, you know what? I was going to tell you about these omega-3s and omega-6s. I'll talk about that tomorrow. We'll talk about omega-3s and omega-6s tomorrow and the whole idea about the ratios and the proportions of each. And then we'll talk about a vitamin that you need, you absolutely must have in a supplemental form if you're going to take care of protecting your essential fatty acids. We'll do all that tomorrow on the bright side. So anyway, this guy, uh, Dan, writes to me, his 90-year-old father's been fighting macular degeneration for some time now. And then he says, he's in generally good health, no serious medical problems after his heart bypass. Now, this is the kind of misunderstandings that we have about health. If you're fighting macular degeneration and you had a heart bypass, you're not in good health. And then the, the, the doctor, uh, Dan, goes on to say the medical field is no help at this point. Well, of course it's no help at this point because the medical field and, unfortunately, Dan, and unfortunately most of us who deal with the medical model think that we're healthy but we just have macular degeneration, that our body's fine but we just had a heart bypass. Now, I'm not ripping on Dan or anybody else, but I'm just... I just want you to understand that if you think you're healthy but you only have macular degeneration, or you think you're healthy but you only have polycystic kidney disease, this is what a gal I talked to a couple months ago said to me, her husband's healthy, he just has polycystic healthy kidney disease. We're going to think that our only problem is the macula, or our only problem is the kidney, or our only problem is the heart, and it's not going to be possible to reverse. Because these issues that we call diseases are really symptoms. They're not diseases, and you cannot heal a symptom. You can only stop a symptom. A symptom is a signal, and it's a sign, and it cannot be reversed without changing what it's pointing to, without changing what is its cause. You can hide it. You can mask it. You can eliminate it with surgery, and this is what doctors do, but you cannot heal it unless you address the cause. The symptom is a sign. It is not the cause. This is the most important idea on all of health when it comes to reversing chronic degenerative disease. Rest assured, the body can reverse chronic degenerative disease, but it cannot do it if we think that the symptom is the problem. The symptom is a sign of the problem. And we have to make that distinction between the sign of the problem and the real problem. If you have macular degeneration, guaranteed, 100%, you're not processing your fats correctly. Not 99%, folks, 100%. If you have macular degeneration, you're not processing your fats correctly, and you're not getting your fats. So for macular degeneration, focus on the fatty part, uh, fat, uh, fat absorption system. That means... All of the nutrients that we talked about earlier in the program that we talk about every day on the program for improving fat absorption. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're using lecithin after all your meals. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes after all your meals. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're using your probiotics, your bioluminescent nightly essence and eating fermented foods and using apple cider vinegar. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're using vitamin A with your enzymes and lecithin and bile salts and fat absorption aids, 20,000 IU a day. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're using zinc and selenium supplements and sulfur supplements, all of which are important for eye health and all of which are processed by the fatty part of the body. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're eating lots of pigments, colors. That means the reds and oranges and blues, the peels of fruits, and, and fruits and vegetables in general, phytonutrient pigments, make sure you're using them with your fatty, the fatty part of your body. Uh, I'm sorry, the fat absorption system, bile salts, lecithin, etc. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're using vitamin E with all of your fat absorption nutrients, 400 international units a day. If you have macular degeneration, make sure you're using your essential fatty acids with all of your fat absorption supplements lecithin, bile salts, etc. You notice I didn't even say anything about the eyes. 
It's all about the digestive system and fats and fatty vitamins and then minerals, which are processed by the fatty component of the body. Okay. 844-236-6010. Let's head to the phones. Talk to Nicole in Washington, D.C. Good morning, Nicole. How you doing? Good morning, Ben. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for calling. What's going on? Um, question about pityriasis rosea. Um, okay. Sort of developed it um, maybe about four months ago. Um, oh, okay. Small spot on my abdomen. Um, I'm sure you're going to say that it's related to the digestive system. You must have heard this um, program before. I, I have quite a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, what are you doing in Washington? What, what, are you in the government? Do you work for the federal government? Um, I work in law enforcement, so it's definitely okay. uh, a stressful, a stressful environment. Let's say that. Got it. Okay. So uh, here's the deal. Any rash, any rash, any rash is a sign of, the, uh, of uh, activation of the body's defenses, the immune system. And uh, typically it involves microinflammation as well. Inflammation, you know, when we think about inflammation, we think of the big kind of inflammation, like a black eye or a broken leg. But uh, microscopic inflammation that occurs at the level of a cell will keep cells from dividing correctly. And redness and rashes always mean some kind of immune and inflammatory involvement because the bulk of your immune system is located in the digestive tract, Nicole. I hate to, you know, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here because you know what I'm going to say. Look for other issues that, are, uh, that affect how the immune system is operating. In other words, foods, because most of your immune system is in the digestive system. So I, I almost guarantee that you probably know this, you sound like a smart gal, there's something percolating in the digestive system, and it probably has been going on for a while. Do you have any other skin issues, by the way? Psoriasis, rosacea, anything like that? Um, no, not necessarily. I have started to notice, though, I'm in my early 30s, that I'm just starting to notice skin things more now. Um, Got it. Got you know, it. rashes That's... that'll come and go. How about digestive issues? Any history that way? That's really where you want to be focusing on. Can't take care of it. I have. Once Hang on, let me just say this real quick. Once you see something on the skin, the, the cow has left the barn. It's over. That's the end of it. Your job is to prevent it from occurring again. There's nothing you can do. This is why dermatology is the dumbest part of all of medicine. Medicine in general doesn't help folks, ambulatory medicine. But dermatology is the dumbest. Why? Because by the time you see the rash, it's over. By the time you see the psoriasis or the lichen planus or the eczema, it's over. You've got to take care of tomorrow's rash or eczema or lichen planus. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You were going to say something about your digestive system. No, that's okay. I've uh, started to experiment with a uh, allergy restriction diet, and I've noticed that I am reacting to certain types of foods. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Hang on a second, Nicole. We've got to take a break. I'll give you some ideas when we come back. But it sounds like you know what's going on. It sounds like you're on the right track. So don't go away. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with Nicole in Washington. And you and your phone calls, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. We're back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben talking to Nicole in Washington, D.C. Psoriasis rosea. It's got little little spots on on the abdomen. Nicole, are you there? That is correct. Okay. Are you noticing? You said you noticed that you had some kind of uh, some foods were triggering allergic reactions. What were those allergic reactions, by the way? I'm I'm sensitive to FODMAPs, and I've noticed I'm sensitive to vegetable oils. That's such awesome. As canola and soy. Tell tell the listeners about FODMAPs. Um, I didn't know about FODMAPs until somebody suggested it to me, but uh, my understanding is it's fructose malabsorption, so I've definitely had to cut back on things such as apples and just um, nice. other types of foods, cutting back almonds. I was a big almond milk drinker, um, and I noticed that that made a huge difference. That's um, coming awesome. off the bulletproof diet is really Nic what uh, when I noticed this. That's Nicole. Do you understand how awesome what you're saying is? You have liberated yourself from the medical model. If you're like 99% of folks who don't listen to this program, you would have gone to the dermatologist, you would have gotten a steroid cream, you probably would have gotten the antibiotic, and the doctor would have said there's no cause for your rosea, for your skin condition, and you're just going to be on medication the rest of your life. This is what 99% of people are told when they go to the dermatologist. But Nicole, you have treated yourself, you've emancipated yourself from the medical model, and congratulations. That I can't tell you how awesome that is. Not just for your skin issues, but for anything else that comes up. See how this, how, how much power you have over your health challenges by keeping track and, notice, and noting these kinds of, uh, the relationship between what you're eating and these kinds of symptoms. By the way, if you're in law enforcement, don't you have to take copious notes when you're doing some kind of case? 
Oh, absolutely. You have to be uh, very, very tuned into uh, everything around you. Observant, you know, right? Is, isn't right. that the most important thing? I, I assume that you're, you're like on the ground kind of thing, working with, with specific cases. Isn't the most important thing data collection and, and